Hey guys, uh, you're with Brian and we're talking to uh, Mr. Ralph Ballinger who is a very important person because during the Second World War Ralph was part of a program uh, in the United Kingdom growing food under uh, very difficult circumstances. Ralph, do you want to just give us a quick talk about that in your book? Yes, well, what happened Brian, I went over in the Royal Navy and I was serving in the Navy. Uh, Navy from 1943 to 42, and then the big problem developed with all the sinking of all the ships in the Atlantic, a lot of the food supply coming through from uh, New Zealand, Australia, Canada and the Commonwealth, uh, there were so many ships being sunk that the food and rationing in England got so severe uh, that it the, the whole war could have been lost just through uh, loss of not only of food but of confidence in what it was going to be all about. So what happened, they looked through the lists and they found that six of us working in the services over there had ag degrees in agriculture and so they said uh, we're going to take you out of the navy or the army whatever you're in and put you on to advising on food production. Well, <clears throat> at the time I'd been on a destroyer out in the Mediterranean and I just I had, went through a commission and I was just being drafted to another destroyer and when I, this notice came through and I went along to the drafting captain and I said, Sir, I'm afraid I'm being drafted out of the Navy onto food production. And he said, Ballinger, nobody ever gets out of the Navy. <laughs> so anyway, the, uh, it did eventuate. I was sent up to the National Institute of Agriculture and Botany in Cambridge. And <clears throat> when I arrived there, they said, well, we're going to put you on to uh, vegetable seed production. And um, I said, well, I don't know a thing about it. And they said, well, nobody else does, so you get stuck in. And what had happened was that a lot of the seed supplies had been coming from Holland, Eastern Europe, and North Africa and various uh, other countries and all these supplies were cut off and so there was a terrific lack of seed. There were some coming from Australia, New Zealand, Canada and the States but not sufficient to, um, to keep the thing going with the increase but agriculture and horticulture production in England uh, due to this food drive that there was a big shortage of seed. So we had to learn pretty quickly how to go around learning how to grow these different crops and find out the problems and about not only growing it but thrashing it and uh, disease control and all these conditions. And so that was how I first got into uh, vegetable seed production and horticultural work because I had the degree in agriculture. So that at the, when the war ended and I was going to come back to uh, a job I had with the uh, crop research station at Lincoln with the DSIR, they said, well, we want to start a vegetable research station. So we'd like you to... Um, visit all the uh, research and seed firms in England and then go across to the United States and, and travel around there for three months and get all the information you can on vegetable research uh, before you come back. So I had uh, about six months travelling around getting all this information and then I came back uh, to Lincoln and set up the uh, uh, vegetable research section there, uh, which got underway at that time. And I was, I was there for uh, from 46 through to 49. And by that time I was, um, I was getting a bit round off through the red tape. Uh, in Britain with this National Institute of Agriculture and Botan Botany, it was an independent, independent body uh, run by the research team, advisory team, plus the seed firms. And we were given a job and they're told to get straight on to it. 
and they left the responsibility to us. Now, what I found when he came back to Lincoln that every little thing you wanted, whether it's marking pegs or a pencil or whatever, you had to apply for it and put a requisition order in. <laughs> and this, very often with a spray program, you needed that spray immediately. And uh, they just, well, the things didn't happen. So when the opportunity came, uh, I was visiting Blenheim on a uh, on seed production uh, because we're increasing our stocks of vegetables up in this area. And I was up here, this um, rehab farm came up of 26 acres. So uh, it was just by chance that I happened to be here at the time that uh, it was going to be uh, the farm of 26 acres was going to be cut up for housing. And I said, well, that's criminal. I said, the, that land is 30 odd feet of silt. I said, it's too good just to put houses on it. So the agricultural advisory office said, well, you're a uh, ex service, so why don't you put in for it? So <laughs> I put in for it, and about three months later, Pat and I were up here in Blenheim. And we've got a story here with your book, is that right? Yeah, well, this book, The Sea and the Soil, which we put out last year, uh, this records the, partly it's the uh, first part is the uh, diary um, Sorry. of my time uh, in the Navy, and uh, we had a pretty rough time. Uh, on destroyers out in the Mediterranean. We, there were four of us destroyers and one flotilla. We left uh, Plymouth in uh, March uh, 1941 and by the end of May we were the only ship surviving because the rest were uh, lost at the Battle of Crete. Uh, so we had good experience there. Well this first part is about that, then it carries on to my transfer onto food production. And this particular stack here, I happened to be on a friend's farm uh, at, at Royston out of Cambridge. And um, I was, he said, can you give us a hand with our harvest tomorrow? And he said, I've got a stack builder coming and all the land girls. And next morning uh, when you woke up, he said, look, I've got a problem, he said, um, uh, this, um, my stack builder's got, got the flu, can't come. Mm. He said, do you think you can build the stack for me? And I said, yes, I'll build the stack. So anyway, we built the stack, which turned out to be a pretty good one. And he said, my word, that's a good stack. He said, you haven't lost your skill at stack building while you've been in the Navy. Yeah. I said, and that's the first stack I've ever built. Yeah. <laughs> We're running, uh, we've got um, uh, basically a minute yeah. for you to, well, to then, sum anyway, up for us. When I continued out here in Blenheim, uh, we got into all different things I had worked with Arthur Yates as we used our, our knowledge on uh, plant breeding of uh, vegetable stocks and we did their trials and uh, breeding work for 15, uh, let's see, no 25 years actually. We got into other things like morphine poppy and we were running a plant breeding program with the pharmaceutical firms in Britain. And uh, this was very successful out here. Now our morphine contents were so high that uh, they said they're going to come out this way. But uh, unfortunately, they went to Tasmania and they built up a uh, multi million uh, industry there now. Uh, and uh, this is something we, we might have had here, but Australia was a bigger market and they went over there. We're coming to our end. Yeah, so anyway, life here in Blenheim has been pretty good as far as we're concerned. We're glad we made the move to come up this way. Okay, so we're finishing here, but um, hopefully we can pick this up again. And this is uh, New Zealand's most experienced food grower, Ralph Ballinger. We'll speak to you next time, guys. God willing.